Well, I'm really pleased to say that I'm now joined by Kevin Hennessy, who is Kennel Hatton to his father, Paul Hennessy, who uh, has a great history now with the English Derby, a couple of successes, which we'll touch on in a minute. Thank you for joining us, Kevin. Uh, big effort going into this year's Derby again, and you've got quite a decent team, all of which we'll talk about in just a moment. But having won two of the last five English Derbies, is the hunger still there? Oh, of course, of course. It's, it's, it's one of the big events that you target every year. Um, this year, I suppose, has been a little bit trickier um, than recent years with with COVID and, and and with Brexit and all the forms and stuff. You have to you have to get sorted before you even think about going anywhere. It all goes over my head. It all goes over the father's head. But lucky enough, um, my mother's on top of all of that. And Touchwood so far, uh, she's had all the right forms in place, and and we haven't had too many issues going over and back. But um, yeah, look, it's 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 a brilliant time of year. If you're if if you don't get the butterflies in your stomach coming up to the derbies, you're you're in the wrong game. Absolutely, and it is a big effort for you. You're certainly taking it very seriously. You've been coming over to uh, see Toaster as a track. What do you make of it as a derby venue? Ah, look, it, the facilities in Toaster. I I remember the first year we went over. Um, I never experienced anything like it. Um, of a sort of an after party, or even not even the after party, like the going in for the races, and you have the big countdown and. It's it's unbelievable. It 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 really is. It's sort of a Vegas feel to it for a Greyhound track, which I'd never experienced before. So from an atmosphere point of view, it's it's incredible. Um, I went over there the first time I went over there with with I had three superstars, JT Jet, JT Yankee, and Priceless Brandy, and I think we had a trial or maybe two, and even into the first round of the Derby itself, I remember feeling that the dogs just were lost. It, it, it's a track that I think the more experience you have the better it is. And I vouched to myself leaving the track that year, I'd never make that mistake again, that they'd go back. And we wouldn't normally be ones for running in trial stakes, normally a trial or two, and then we'd, we'd take our chance. But um, I made it a, we made it a priority this year to, to get a couple of runs into them, that by the time they go over for the first round, they know exactly what's happening and they aren't caught cold, so to speak. It's, it's, it's a track that's Look, it has every track has its issues. Um, it's it's a track that I struggle to find a, a similar track. When we used to go to Wimbledon, we would trial in our local Kilkenny track as we felt it was there were similarities. And if the dogs ran well in in Kilkenny, they'd run well in Wimbledon. I don't think we have a, a venue quite similar to Towster over here. So that, hence why I think the more experience you get over there, the better you'll be. And 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 that's the card we played. We put a lot of work in to get to this stage. Hopefully, it'll pay off in a couple of weeks. We've got a team of five from your kennel that we're going to talk about, but I just want to touch on one that some people might want to have a bet on that won't be going, and that is uh, JT Havana. You've decided not to take him. Yeah, look, Havana was was is a really exciting dog. Um, we bought him last year, and anything that could go wrong did go wrong between now and then. Nothing major. He didn't suffer a major injury. It was just little niggle after little niggle, and every time we, we built up a head of steam, we got another setback. Now, he hasn't had a setback this time. However, we noticed him every time he'd get back from England, just a little bit more tired and a little bit more tired. Like, this is a dog who'd been off the track for probably going on four to five months. Um, we sort of rushed him back because we do believe he's the ability to be a derby caliber dog. Um, but uh, it was just a little bit too rushed. Um, we're going to take him to Cork the weekend and start there. Look, he's only still probably about 60 to 70% there. But um, his last trial was very happy in Toaster. He, he missed a break, got up the inside of Beach Avenue, gave Beach a bit of a nudge, and he held Beach all the way to the line. And we know how good Beach is coming home. So I was very happy with the dog. We still are, but it's just it would just be too much of an ask to put on, on him um, at this stage of his career. I don't know how much of a sort of advantage it is going into Derby, but your kennel is certainly absolutely buzzing. And not just dogs, but horses as well, of course. You've been all over the press and certainly uh, the Greyhound world is very proud of your dad for training Heaven Helpers, who, of course, won at the Cheltenham Festival. There must be a, a really good vibe around your kennels, which must rub off on the dogs. Ah, yeah, look, it, it is what it is. It's it's I, it's hard to put into words even still now. It's, it's still a bit of a dream. It's... Like I, the part that got me every time was how everyone was talking about, oh, it was a plot job and protecting our handicap mark and going over chases to mind our hand. Like it wasn't at all. Um, it all just fell into place. It, we went chasing because he felt that that was the right thing to do, that she was back as a novice off level weights and stuff. Didn't work out over the fences. She wasn't as 
aggressive at her jumps. She wasn't as fluent. And we decided to go back to hurdles, went to Leopardstown. If she didn't win in Leopardstown, she wouldn't have got into the race at Cheltenham. She happened to win there and she happened to get into that race. So we took our chance. Like it's, that's it. That's pretty much how it happened. It was no master plan or anything like that. It just fell into place the way it was meant to be. And it was incredible. It, it gave him a buzz. I don't think could ever be matched again. And, and the fact that she was home bred and owned by John Turner, who uh, has the dogs and is a great family friend and great crack with him. And the buzz even leading up to it, like the banter that was going on was unbelievable. So they can, we'll never forget her for that. Well, Kevin, the first of your contenders that I want to talk to you about is Beach Avenue, a June 2018 dog who uh, most recently was a Shelbourne 600 finalist, finished third in that final, certainly competed against the best of the best in Ireland. What can you tell us about Beach Avenue? Uh, sure, what's, what's there not to like about Beach? Um, he's a dog that when we bought him, we knew he had a big engine and so frustrating, even in A3 and A4 races, he was running off the first bend and, and throwing his chance away, but we went to the Laurels in Cork with him and it just clicked. He, he he started to fly home in Cork. He was giving them all big starts, but he really was flying home. And and from then, he's just gone from strength to strength. He he ran in the Easter Cup. He wasn't trapping particularly well in the Easter Cup, but he was showing big pace behind very fast dogs. And um, then we went to the 600 with him and he was awesome the whole way through. And then in the final, he ran off the first bend, which I was very frustrated with at the time because it was back to what he was doing as a pup. But I actually slowed down the race a couple of times and watched it again. And if you watch it, he tucks in behind Bally Mac Wild uh, into the corner and one and three sort of come together. And all I can think of is he anticipated a bit of trouble, which made him veer to the right, thinking it was going to there was going to be trouble. And he just gave himself a mountain to climb and he, <laughs> he nearly climbed it. He, another another stride or two and he got up. Um, so, yeah, look, he's, he's the most lovable dog ever. He's, he's never out of a competition. I think he'll be... I think he'll be a brilliant dog to qualify most nights over there. I think it'll be hard to, to have three ahead of most nights. Winning heats and stuff is probably going to be a tall order for him because he's going to probably set himself uh, off the pace and something may get away. But as we saw in the trial stake last night, a, a real good dog in Highlight Arkel got away in him and he was still able to come from behind him. Now, he is, he is a little bit backward. We haven't done anything with him since the 600. So I still think there, he should improve a good bit from that run so um, he won't go back over now that's his prep done uh, we'll just go back for the first round but I was very very happy with him last night yeah he won his trial stake really really well and uh, the other thing I noticed he seemed to improve markedly from his trial to his race as well is that because he's more of a, a race dog temperament or do you think it's just getting used to the track both absolutely beach is more of a competitive sort um, you put him in a race and it just lights him it really does light him up he, he's not one um, priceless Jeff, who we'll touch on later, would bust the clock for you every time you put him in a trial. Beach would never really do that. But you you set Beach a target, you give him something to aim at, and he won't stop till he gets there. No matter how far down he is, no matter how far behind he is, he'll pick himself up and go again. There was a rounded Easter Cup um, where our other dog wiped him out with the first corner and left him way off the pace. And I don't know, I still to this day don't know how he got up to qualify. So... He, he's a real competitive edge to him and, and hopefully that'll stand him in good stead. Absolutely. 33 to 1 at the moment with Star Sports. Is that fair? I think it is. I think he's, he, he'll represent good value to anyone. Um, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he'll, he's not the type of dog I think that could go through the derby unbeaten. I think he'll plug away second or third most nights, but um, he's a really, really good dog, competition dog, and he'll be a hard dog to keep out of the frame most nights. He's, He's built like a tank. He, he's able to take a bump and and he's never out of the contest. No matter how far down he is, he'll try. And 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 in a competition, that's six rounds. That's the biggest attribute you can have that when things don't go right, you're still in with a chance. Well, of course, the day after that Charles State win at Toast, like Kevin, everybody is talking about Priceless Jets, a track record-breaking win, 29-11. Uh, he clocked fast away, always led. He just looked at the sort of perfect dog from Trap 6 at Toaster. Um, I actually spoke to Ian Fortune about this dog, and he said he's been looking as though the penny was kind of going to drop for a little while, and, and now it finally has. He's the real deal. Is that fair? He's been the real deal here for a long time. Um... We, we bought him out of uh, the Unraced in Tralee last year and we've always known the ability he has. You can bring him into Kilkenny on a Monday morning and the, the times he would do would, would frighten you, to 
be fair. They really would. Um, consistency is, has been his Achilles heel um, to this point. He's just, he just struggled to put it all together on a consistent basis. But last night when he trapped, I, uh, we knew straight away, I, I, I thought he'd go close to 29 seconds um, when, he did, when he did it that way. And hopefully, hopefully um, the travelling, the change of track, um, the different trapping with the way the hair goes past and all might just be the complete spark to him. We, we, he's an inside seed over here. We've chopped and changed with his seeding over here as well, just to try and get him to trap. Trapping can be his his downfall at times. There, there won't be dogs in this. There won't be many dogs in this faster than him or with more ability than him. He's he's exceptionally gifted, unbelievably talented. It's just about putting each piece of the puzzle together on a consistent basis. And if he does that, um. He'll, he'll go very close. Like you saw last night when he trapped, it's game over. It, it really doesn't matter when he does it that way. It, 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 it'll take an extraordinary greyhound to beat him. Um, and hopefully now he'll, he'll, like I said, he'll put it together going forward. But that's him done now. That's his prep over with. Um, as Dad said to me last night, there's not much point bringing him over next week. He, he can't improve on that. So that's the way it is. Absolutely. And uh, your dad said afterwards in a, an interview with RPG TV, I think Toaster suits him. I thought, yeah, that's just a, a bit of an understatement. He, he looks the real deal there. A bit of debate around seeding. Obviously, he, he ran his first race there from trap two, finished fifth. He looked very comfortable in six last night. So obviously, you chop and change it there. How are you seeding for the derby? Oh, he'll definitely be wide. Um, we ran him off the wide in Limerick in the ledger, uh, hoping it would help him start. Just didn't happen for him. But I, th- I really do believe that you can run, you can ru- you can win from the outside in toaster, and um, if you if you can start well and go up and take the corner, it's a really good position to be in. And um, the way he did it last night, I think it'd be silly to think of changing anything now. The betting's interesting because Star Sports took a hefty bet last night after that track record run. He was 40 to 1, he's now 33 to 1. So same price as Beach Avenue, very, very different types of dog. And when they last ran against each other in Shelbourne, uh, he was actually behind Beach Avenue. So who's the better value at 33 to 1? Um, that's a toss-up. Uh, I, I'm going to sit in the fence with that one. Um, Beach, Beach is the ultra-consistent, the ultra... A competitor, he's a great, great competition dog. Priceless Jet has, I suppose, that bit of an X factor that he can, like Priceless Jet can do a four fourteen that he did, or whatever the four fourteen. I think he did a split last night. Beach can't do a four fourteen, or he won't do a four fourteen. So if Priceless Jet does that every night, Beach, Beach will have a mountain to catch him. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anyone off either of them. Um, genuinely, I, I hope Priceless Jet can keep, keep producing those runs. But I, I, I was really taken by Beach last night as well because he's um he's just such a good competition dog. You know what you're going to get with him. He's he's going to be hard to keep out of frame. Well, the youngster of your team, Kevin, is JT Wexford. He's just uh, an August 2019, a real baby. Will he go for the derby? Yeah, he will. He um it's it's a similar path we took with JT Jet. I remember doing an interview with you. I think it was Priceless Guy you wanted to talk about uh, after winning the Gold Cup when we brought him over. He was one of the favourites and. I was keen to get a word in with Jet at the time because I knew I knew what was in the under the the bonnet, so to speak, with him. But it was just a when we brought him over the first year, it was more of a learning curve to stand him instead for the following year, and it worked out fantastically. It's a similar path we're taking with Wexford. Um, we're not setting expectations. We're not expecting to win the Derby with him or anything like that. It's it's genuinely we won't put him under any more pressure than he needs to be. It's all a learning for him. Um, He's an exceptionally gifted greyhound who's just not put it at the at the boxes in his last couple of starts. But um, trust me, he can. Um, he can do the spits that the fancy ones are doing. It's just not happened for him at the moment. But any any runs he gets through the Derby um, is just another box ticked for hopefully a, a crack at it again next year with him. So um, a really really good greyhound, and I'm excited about his future. So it's sort of going to be the, the start of the journey in a way at, at Toaster. I mean, he's only had a handful of races. Of course, he went out in the semifinals of the Maiden Derby at Toaster Tuesday night. But so uh, what do you make of his running style? Is it a bit of an experience that shows just greenness? Yeah, he, I, I said it here the other day. He reminds me a, a lot of JT Dutch, um, who is JT Jet's brother, who, who could just absolutely blow you away at the boxes. And normally those type of dogs when it when they miss the break or things don't go their way they tend to just 
not so much give up, but they find it difficult to get back into a race when you when you have an early pacer who doesn't break. He's missed the break now in his two starts in Toaster, and he's knuckled down and really battled. And he was unlucky last night to, to go out by three parts of a length. And and, it, and even in the first round, it was all over down the back, and he managed to get up and qualify. So I absolutely love his his determination. And to know that that's in his locker is a brilliant thing going forward because, like I said, trust me, he's not a slow starter. He's a lightning quick starter who's just, he charged the boxes last night. He's mistimed it in his last couple, but the timing will come back. Uh, I'm confident about that. And, and when it does, um, I think he's a dog with a bright future. So maybe we won't take too much notice of Lofty's 125 to 1 for this year. We'll ask him for a price for next year. And if he starts, if he if he finds his trapping boots over there, it's a, it's a big price. Well, Kevin, one of your more experienced runners, probably the most experienced runner coming over, is Boyle Sports Bingo, a September 2017 dog. is 66 to 1 at the moment with Star Sports. Now, he was a runner-up in the Juvenile a couple of years ago for you guys, been racing for you for a long time. He sort of went off the boil a little bit, but he's really found his form again since Christmas, or just before Christmas even. He did, yeah. I don't know what happened when we got him, when we got him. I couldn't wait to get stuck into him. Um, he he ran behind uh, Bras Rambono in the Puppy Derby, and I thought he was an aeroplane. And this lad was running him down. He was never going to beat him, but he was uh, looked to have the match for him from the second bend home. And um, I couldn't wait for him, and it just never happened. It just uh, any race he ran in, it just it just wasn't working. Every vet in the country went through him. We changed everything. We tried everything, and it just wasn't working. Uh, we sent him into Kenny for a couple of low grade races and he just started to get better and better and better. He made a final in Kenny, picked up a little knock in the semis and uh, it stood against him in the final. But after that, we went to Dublin and he became a revelation. Like he's, he's ran in the two big competitions in Shelburne this year, the Gold Cup and the Easter Cup. And he made the final in both. Very unlucky, in my opinion, in the Gold Cup. Um, he just needed one gap to open. Every gap closed. He got cut off maybe four times in the race and was still only beaten probably a length or two. So um, he's been absolutely flying. His form is just incredible and he, he he's just getting better with age. He really is. He's coming up, I'd say, probably on four years of age at this stage, but he's running better now than he's ever ran. Um, I was very happy with his trial yesterday. I know the time wasn't particularly good, but um, I, 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 hats off to Nathan. He was able to video it on his phone for me and I saw it and he missed the break and he got trouble at the first and he got cut off again at the third and he rallied again up the home straight going to beat in the length. And genuinely, he's probably about 50% ready. Um, we haven't done a whole lot with him since Easter Cup. He picked up a knockout coming out of that. So he should improve leaps and bounds. And he's another one like Beach who's just a brilliant competition dog. He's He, he gives you everything he has. Uh, he starts well, probably gets outpaced down the back and he stays on again up the home straight. That's his style of running. I think he'll. I think he'll enjoy Toaster. I think he. I think he could really run the place well. Um, he's the capability of flashing out. He's a good bend runner. Sticks to the inside where he can. Um, and I'm not saying he'll win an English Derby, but he's a definitely a dog I could see lining up in the third round quarter final. And when you get to that stage, Julie, as you know yourself, form goes out the window. Uh, class comes to the fore, but you could get a dog that'll plug away and keep qualifying. And I hope he's it. Will you come over again with him before the derby starts? Yeah, the plan would be to, to run him in a trial stake there on Tuesday, next Tuesday. It's a September 2017, so a veteran later this year. Notoriously, I think you guys prefer to bring slightly younger dogs, but is it an advantage in some ways, perhaps? It, it all comes down to the form of the dog. It comes down to what you have and, and what you want to bring over. And at the moment... Um, he's ran in the two big competitions in Shelburne. He he was unlucky, as I said, in the Gold Cup, and he made the Easter Cup final. How do you leave him at home? He's 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 as in a good form as any dog going over there. He's had a break since the Easter Cup. He's only coming back. He's in great form, and we're confident and hopeful that he'll he'll give a good performance over there. Well, Kevin, you've just thrown another one at me that you're bringing over for the Derby, which uh, I wasn't aware of until now. I know you've been trying to get a prize for Hello Hammond, so I, I've been on to Lofty. Uh, and he's got your prize. Are you happy with 125 to 1? Yeah, I thought he'd be about 150s is what I had envisaged in my head. And it's a fair price. Look, he's going to be the, the undercooked one, I suppose, going over. I'm not trying to say it's, it's someone that we have up our sleeve that's going to go over and do a priceless jet did first time around or anything like that. It's just he's a dog. Um, 
I've made a comment on him a couple of times. I think he's Beach Avenue, but just about three months or six months behind him maturity wise. Um, he's got a serious engine. Um, he's got great ability. He's in a final in Cork on Saturday night. Um, he's drawn three in the final of that. Um, look, there's plenty of early pace in it. Skywalker Barry, the Puppy Derby winner, is in it. And um, he wouldn't have the early pace that they, they possess, but he's got unbelievable uh, finishing ability, similar to Beach Avenue, very like Beach Avenue. Um, but hopefully, if he comes through that final in Cork well on Saturday night, the plan would be to bring him over on Tuesday, give him a trial, and he would go into the Derby off the back of just one trial, which, as I said at the start of this, I, I don't think is a, is a positive thing in Toaster, but it's the hand we've been dealt. He's made the final in Cork on merit, and hopefully if he runs well in Cork on Saturday, um, the plan would be to go to Toaster on Tuesday. So, Kevin, you mentioned things are difficult with COVID, et cetera, the travelling to and from. It's difficult enough for you guys anyway. But is your dad planning on staying? Is anybody planning on staying over here with the dogs or will he travel? No, we've had the pleasure of being staying with Lawrence Tuff and, um, and Arlene. They've been absolutely outstanding. Um, they're based at the track. Uh, when I got out, I, I asked Nathan uh, for some advice on where might be the best place to stay and he he gave me Lawrence's number and, and it was the best thing that could have happened. Um, they've literally gone above and beyond for us. Lawrence created a, a section in his place, an isolated section where our dogs go. Um, they constructed kennels for us to, to facilitate the numbers. They've literally done everything. Um, Tom McLaughlin and my mother have been sharing the driving so far over and back. And every time they come back, it's it's just how welcoming Lawrence and all the staff have been. They're keen to help us let in the dogs, take them for a walk. Even Arlene last night managed to walk the two winners. So like it's, it's, a, it's a team effort and they're a big part of it too. They've, they've, they've gone above and beyond for us. So um, we won't change that. Um, the plan will be to go out the day before, run, get home that night and they're home here. Like the dogs were home here this morning at seven o'clock. So they're back in their bed the following morning. They have all week then to, to keep in our routine of getting the vet checks, get galloped, all of the stuff that we like to do here in, uh, during the week, we can keep up. So uh, it's what we did with Blake. Um, it's, it's, it's what we like to do and it, it works for us. So um, everybody to themselves, but I must say a massive thank you again to, to Lawrence and his team. It's been, they've been very welcoming. Certainly, your team will have some laughs with uh, Lawrence Tuffin as well. Um, of the prices we've discussed and the dogs we've discussed, where would your money be going? Uh, I'd split it across the five of them. I know. Um, look, Beach Avenue is just such a competition dog. He, 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 he won't win every night for you, but he's going to be hard to keep out of the first three. So um, I wouldn't put anyone off him. Priceless Jet's got that X Factor ability. If you're looking for a flashy type, um, I know everyone was getting on about them going to bust the clock and if he's able to do 29.11 or they'll do 28.70 well I can tell you when Priceless Jet does what Priceless Jet did last night there's not many that will go that much quicker than him now maybe the track might improve or whatever but trust me when he does things like that it's there's not a handful of dogs in, in Ireland or England that would beat him so if you're looking for that bit of X factor he's got it and Wexford, I know I'm sort of going over them all. You asked me for one, but Wexford at a hundred and odd to one. When, when we're, hopefully, when we're talking this time next year, I hope you're saying to me, "How was he that price?" When you look at what ability he has, it's just not, it's just trapping. He's just not getting right at the moment. Um, but he's he's an exceptionally fast dog. But for one, probably Beach. Okay, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. It's been brilliant chatting to you as always, and we love having you over. I can't wait to see uh, you at Toaster. Hopefully, you'll be coming over, will you? Uh, we'll see what way work dictates, but if I can, I will. Good, excellent. Well, wish the team all the best from me. And uh, yeah, we we'll look forward to catching up very soon at Toaster and good luck for the derby. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you. Mm -hmm.